How's it going? Today I have a very special guest with me, Sean Allen. Hey, how's it going everybody? Thank you so much for being on my channel. Thanks for having me. So for those of you who don't know, Sean is a iOS developer and content creator, very similar to kind of me. And very what similar, we do. yeah. yeah. Um, Sean, do you want to talk about what you do? And who yeah, you are? so so my channel is mostly I do a good mix of things. And that's what I like about it, right? Mm -hmm. I do tutorials, vlogs, do a show called Swift News. So if you're interested in Swift and keeping up with all the latest stuff that's going on, definitely check that out. So a lot of them I have noticed, but we have a Lego set here which I'm super excited about because I've been wanting to build Legos yeah. for a long time. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Sean a bunch of questions while we're going to be building Lego stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I asked on Twitter what we should build and uh, I heard spaceship come through a couple of times. Yeah, a lot of people said algorithms, which confused me. Yeah, like, same. I, how are we gonna build algorithms with Legos? I, but I don't know whatever. how that would work. So we decided on a spaceship. Yeah. Actually, the recommendation was the spaceship, meaning oh. like Apple Park, the, the circle building, but that's just, just a, a donut. Yeah, it's just a circle, yeah. not a lot of creativity. There. We do have a special guest we haven't introduced yet. Though. We do. We are so privileged to be here today with the one and only Craig Federici. He is going to be judging the Lego <laughs> competition here. Hair Force One himself. Yes, I want you to see. This is Craig Federici. So Craig is going to sit here, I guess. Yeah, he's got to be front row. Yeah, he's the judging action. the building. Yeah. So we're gonna we're both gonna build our own interpretation of a spaceship using only what's in this box. We're actually gonna split the pieces in half, yeah. and we can only work with what we've got. Ready? You ready? You can be loud. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna go like this. Mine. And this is mine. Ooh, I got the big green piece. Oh, uh, that's cheating. This this is what I really wanted because there's only one of these. Oh, I forgot you're, this one too. Oh wow, I'm at a disadvantage, folks. Yeah some sweet rims though. It'll be okay. All right, yeah. this new show of interviewing someone and playing Legos is called... Interviewing somebody and play Legos. That one, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> oh, and before we get started, uh, we filmed a video on his channel as well, so be sure to go check that out. I will leave a pinned comment and uh, there will be a link in the description box down below. Let's get building. All right, Sean, so first question, how did you get into iOS development? Because you have a very interesting yeah. past. Yeah, um, I, uh, non traditional. So I moved out here to San Francisco, where we are currently, in 2014, and I have degrees in like finance and economics. And I was really interested oh. in like angel investing, venture capital. So when I moved out here, I moved out here for that purpose to like mm. start working at startups, maybe get on the ground floor, you know, work my way up into that world. What happened though is the first startup I worked at, uh, there was like five people there. And now I just found out that I'm gonna do most of the talking, so you have the advantage. Like you ask one question and then just build, build away. <laughs> and I'm just, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> but anyway, no, so I became friends with my developers and just kind of like started looking over their shoulder. Like, what are you building? What is this? Mm. Tell me about this stuff. And started hearing about it. Yeah, I just started kind of coding HTML, CSS on the side on my own out of necessity because I was like marketing, sales, and growth, and I was building oh. landing pages. And we had like two developers, right? So yeah. I don't want to be like, hey, Mr. Developer, Mrs. Developer, can you build my silly little static landing page? You know, they're building the product. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I just built those and kind of caught the bug, like the coding bug, right? The, the magic of like typing on your computer and then it works on your screen, basically kind of quit that job and just went to a boot camp because I fell in love so much. And they were all they were all like excited for me to leave because they were all like developers too. So oh, I was like, yeah, that's go cool. get it. Yeah. They they were Aww. bummed to see me go, of course, but yeah. they were they were excited to see what I was doing. Yeah, they were like, you're gonna become one of us. <laughs> right, one of us. <laughs> one of us, yeah. Like shortly flying tires everywhere. I got a job like about a month after the boot camp. And the boot camp was taught in Objective C. This was like summer of 2015. Oh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. nobody, you know, Swift had just come out or just been announced like, you know, five months before. Mm -hmm. Which is also the reason I went or gave me the push to go to mobile development, right? Because mm. it was like a perfect storm. Like I said, I, I decided to do development basically because of the Swift announcement, mm -hmm. right? I was kind of like talking to a lot of developers. I knew like, yeah, everybody's going to kind of be a beginner, right? Yeah. It's a great time to get started. Yeah. So that was kind of what gave me the extra push to go. Mm. Uh, yeah, but the boot camp was taught in Objective-C and that's pretty much the last time I've touched Objective-C. <laughs> I've uh, been lucky because my first job out of there was Swift and I've been focused on like nothing but Swift ever since. That's true. You, you've gotten, yeah, I, I would say really 
really lucky in that like you've been super immersed in Swift yeah, technologies yeah. this whole time for like the last four years ish, I Basically. guess. Basically, I mean, that's what my channel is based off of. That's mm -hmm. pretty much every job I've had has been Swift. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, don't get me wrong, by, by going all in on Swift, there's absolutely some opportunities I've missed out on, right? Mm. Like, cause a lot of the companies are still in Objective-C. Right. You know, it's getting less and less as time goes on. It's but um, you know, back in 2016, like everything was still Objective-C. So yeah. I certainly missed out on opportunities, but I think it's coming, it's starting to pay off now. Um, just being so immersed in Swift for four years mm -hmm. and now that like almost everything's like Swift now. Yeah, so. and you have built such an amazing community around Swift too with Swift News and mm -hmm. your channel talking about Swift stuff. Pause real quick. Your yeah. spaceship so far and my spaceship so far are so different. That was kind of the <laughs> idea though. That's true, that's true. I feel like I'm building a car more than a spaceship. I actually might take this apart and only work with, because I feel like now that I've started building, I know more what direction I want to go towards, which is mm. kind of like software engineering. Basically, you good segue. You don't know segue. what you're doing no. at first, and then no. you try it, and then you figure it out and a little it, bit. Once you figure it out, you're like, all right, time to rewrite the whole thing. Yeah, because <laughs> you know I mean, <laughs> like, look at this. Like, this thing is so brittle, just like software sometimes, where like, maybe there's like a bug or something, and just go, oh no. <laughs> but like you said, now you're like, okay, now I know what to do. That's what I always say is like, I always ask myself the question, if I could like start from scratch, how much differently would I do it? Yeah. And if that answer is like way different, mm -hmm. it might be worth doing it from scratch. Right. But if it's like, oh, I'd only change one or two small things, then maybe I won't like rewrite it. But yeah. I always kind of ask myself that too, kind of what you're asking yourself, like, should I just rebuild this whole thing? So I want to touch a little bit on something else that I know about you, which is that you used mm -hmm. to be in the Navy. For sure. So kind of what was that like and how did you go from there to uh, like, getting your finance degree and going to your boot camp. Yeah, so so the Navy was right out of high school. The interesting story about that was that I knew at 18, I'm 37 now, at 18, I knew that I would have failed out of college. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm stupid, mm -hmm. just because I was like, wait, they don't care if you go to class? Right. Like, you can, <laughs> okay, I would have been like a social butterfly. Like yeah. that, that aspect of college would have just consumed me. Mm -hmm. And luckily I was kind of smart enough at 18 to like realize that. Yeah, seriously. I was like, I'm dead, not dead if I go there, but you know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> yeah. this will just be a waste of money if yeah. I go there. Like I knew that. So I started exploring other options. Uh, my father was in the Navy, so I asked him about oh. that. Like, hey, what's this, what's this like? Cause I was just exploring other options. Yeah. He started telling me about about it, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. So I ended up being on submarines uh, out of Florida. Whoa. And yeah, that was, was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, did that for like four years. Uh -huh. So this was like 2000 to 2004. Yeah. And then, yeah, got out. This is like a real quick, brief, you know, life story here. Yeah. Got yeah. out, joined the family business, which was all state insurance. Uh -huh. And then at like 28 or 27, I don't know how old it was, uh, 27 had like a quarter life crisis, if you will. That sounds harsh, but it wasn't. But it was just kind of like <laughs> yeah. maturing. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. I was like, I make I make decent money, but it was like I don't like what I do. Mm. Like I go to work every day and just like go through the motions. Like oh, this, this sucks. Yeah. So I kind of had that mat maturation, maturing. I don't know how to talk. Uh, <laughs> of like, okay, I need to find something that I'm passionate about that I want to go to work every day. Yeah. I didn't know what that was, and I kind of thought maybe angel investing, venture capital, like I thought. Mm. So that's why I went to school for finance and economics, all that stuff. Gotcha. And then now we pick up from because I went back to school at like age 29. Yeah. So, wow fun hanging out with uh, the 18 year olds. <laughs> was that on the GI Bill? Yeah, ex oh, exactly. That's a it. great deal. So if anybody out there is in the military or was whatever, like I got paid like 40 grand a year to go to school. That's awesome. Like yeah. school was free uh -huh. and a living allowance that added up to be about 40K a year. Wow. Because the, the little hack there is if you qualify for any scholarships, yeah. your account is like paid off. A so. lot of people at my college actually were on the GI Bill. Oh, were they? Yeah, yeah. they were a lot older than like all of the other like 20 year old yeah, Asian yeah. kids that were in my school. <laughs> but they were awesome to like go to school with because they really wanted to be there and they really That's, like wanted to, it's to learn It's that. interesting that you pointed that out because like, yeah, the no offense to any 18 year olds out there, but you're there, <laughs> like I would have been yeah. in college. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have cared about school. I'd have been there for the social aspect. But yeah. like when I was there, it was all business. Like I was taking 22 credits a semester, wow. going full time over the summer. Like I knock out two degrees in three years doing doing that stuff. Oh my Mainly gosh. because the, also the GI Bill only lasts three years. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you kind of had to. Right, but right, also right, you yeah. did it. But also I was like, I'm not trying to be here forever. Right. You know what I mean? It was like it was like putting my life on pause to go to school. So I was yeah. like, let's, let's get through this like as fast as possible. For sure. Um, and then yeah, that leads into coming out here and then, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to get this piece out of this piece and it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still stuck on this propeller. Like, uh, I, well, I'm going to make it work, but there's no, I think. Is there, is there a special piece? That's what I'm saying. I think there's gotta be. So I know that you just went full-time full content creator, mm -hmm. like you said, and you're actually about to move out of San Francisco. Right. So I want to touch a little bit about this because mm -hmm. I haven't really talked about it on my channel about 
like living in Silicon Valley. I've shown a lot of y'all what it's like uh, and shown you footage of what it's like, but haven't really talked about the experience of it. Mm -hmm. So since you're like actually moving out, out. See yeah, <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, living in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. overrated or underrated? I think it is the best thing a young developer can do. Mm -hmm. So very not overrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are great tech communities in like New York, you know, Denver, Austin, whatever, name it. Um, but it's not the same as being here. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you go to, like for example, I do a coffee every Wednesday with developers and like name a big company, there's developers from that company that go to that meetup. So it's just like everybody's here yeah. and the networking you can do. That being said, that's why I, I, I made sure to clarify that for young developers, you don't have to be young, but mm -hmm. early in your career. Early career. Because, yeah. you know, you, you get that network, you get the experience, maybe you'll get to work at one of these big companies. But once you've done that or have that, like I already, I, I always say I'm leaving because like I've gotten what I needed out of mm -hmm. San Francisco, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. built my name, built the YouTube channel, built a huge network of developers, and now I don't need to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then full-time content creation, which is the reason I'm leaving, is because I want to, you know, buy like a two bedroom place or two or three bedroom place that has like a dedicated studio. Like it took us what, like 40 minutes to set all this up right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want, a, yeah, I want a studio that's just all perfectly set up. Mm -hmm. And you know, buying a two, three bedroom place here in San Francisco, a lot I, don't, of money. I don't have a couple million laying around, believe yeah. it or not. It's like legit <laughs> actually like $2 million yes, <laughs> for like a two bedroom that. place. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I'm not even joking here. Yeah. So you have to do a chapter of your career here. Yeah. I, I, I shouldn't say have to, but very beneficial to do a chapter of your career, whatever yeah. that is to you. That's true. Yeah. There is really no place like Silicon Valley. And I, I think I actually agree with that. Like coming here, especially in early career where you're just starting, you're meeting a lot of new people. Yeah. Um, you're just learning about what's out there and just feeling the enthusiasm of, for tech that's here is mm -hmm. really something special. That said, I've been here for like five years and I'm a little bit like, mm, I are, need non-tech stuff. I'm sorry, are you itching to get out? <laughs> yeah, I am a little bit like, uh, I need a little bit more like, like non-tech people around me. Not, yeah. Nothing against tech people, <laughs> uh, but just like there's other ways of living yeah. uh, without making a six-figure salary, right. uh, without needing to buy a $1 million home mm -hmm. um, that I think like there's, there's more to life. Uh, and that I'm kind of craving that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I first moved here, I went to like all of the iOS meetups. Yeah. I met all a bunch of other like young early career tech people who were super jazzed to be here too. And I definitely have like fostered a lot of great friendships here too. Yeah. For that reason. So we're in the last part of our interview. And I wanted to do a very quick like five question rapid fire to you okay. to get your opinion and read on some stuff. So yeah. I call fire it away. the this or that, yes or no, part, whatever. I don't have names for any of these things. Apparently, yeah. It's hard. It is the <laughs> hardest thing in so programming. Hard. Okay, and then we'll talk about what we made. Um, Sean, yes. does having a CS degree make you a better engineer? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah, I will flat out say it. I don't, but yeah, I mean, it's undeniable. You get the, let me, let me clarify that with, I don't think it's required. I mm -hmm. think you can be a very good engineer without mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but I think it's silly to say that it doesn't make you better, right? <laughs> right? right Having right. just that foundational knowledge, of course that's gonna make you better. The thing is though, is like if you are past the age of college, is like, is it worth the four years of opportunity cost to get that degree, yeah. I don't think so as an adult, right? Mm -hmm. If you're already past the age of college, I don't think you should go back to get the four-year degree. Mm -hmm. Four years is a lot of time, and again, the opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. But if you're younger and like going to school, absolutely, it's, it's the way to go. Cool, okay, next question. MacBook Pro, necessary for your first like entry into software development or not? No, when you say entry, like doing it seriously or just learning? Just learning. No, just learning, no. This or that, soft skills or technical skills? Soft skills. Hey, yeah. me too. <laughs> <laughs> kind of alluded to that earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> All right, this is a very iOS specific one. This or that, UI kit or Swift UI? I have to go with UI kit only because there's a meme right now that I hate Swift UI. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Gotta stay true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, since it's this or that, just UI kit because we're still two to three years away from Swift UI being it's true. real. Yeah, yeah, and that's because Adoption. Yep. <laughs> and lastly, this or that, Johnny Ive or Craig Federighi? Ooh. Johnny Ive. <laughs> First of all, I love seeing the, uh, actually I love them both, but <laughs> my favorite thing about those announcements, I know this is this or that and I'm going off on a rant. That's okay, that's okay, do I'm it. The, I'm the do guest. It. You are the guest, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> um, 
I love the John, Joni Ive like videos, like you know what I mean. So and we haven't seen one in like two or three years. We really haven't. I miss them. Yeah. So that's why all those rumors of him being like kind of like gone already, like yeah. for years. I kind of believe just because like we haven't really like seen those. We miss the aluminium bodies. Exactly. I, I, <laughs> I, lo I love those. <laughs> all right. Here is our final spaceship. Yours can't even stand up. I know, I can't. <laughs> okay, yeah. actually, we should talk about our build. So, Sean, would you like to talk about your build? Yeah, a little bit. So, I prioritized the wheels. So, mm. I made sure I got these guys going. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I didn't, I just had two basic wings. Mm -hmm. And then I, I struggled to get this propeller working, but I think I got. <gasps> oh, I that's how that works. Yeah, but it doesn't stick, though. Oh. Like, it's like, I don't know. So, yeah. anyway, I got that working a little bit. Yeah. And then I just started. Just Stuff and crap on there. Nice. Is this but, for aerodynamicsness? Uh, no, I was hoping I'd have something to like put on here, oh. but I, I didn't have that. So this is an unfinished build. Mm, okay. Well, it needs refactored. Everything is unfinished always. <laughs> right. <and laughs> Software is never done. No, it's never ever Neither done. Is the hard I like I the eyes on the side. Yeah, that was a last YouTube. second edition. So how, how about your little teeter totter thing? My, yeah, my teeter. <laughs> I'm actually. This is like way better than my first, like my initial it, build. It actually looks like a real thing. It kind of does, like, right? I don't know what it is, but it looks like a real thing. I don't know either. It's very symmetrical. It is. So I have a. Is not. I have a little window box right here for the people to be inside and That's look creative. at I had stuff. Some of those. I didn't know what to do with these things. Yeah, I That's wanted to have windows. I only had two wheels, but I was like, well, space, there's not that much gravity. And on Mars and, and the moon and stuff, there's not that much gravity. So I figured that it can just like balance and stuff. What is the percentage of gravity on the moon? Like 40%. <laughs> I, I thought it was like one sixth. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was getting, I think I'm like 90% sure on that. I'm not 100% mm. sure. Mars, yeah. I'm not sure. Mars might be 40%. Mars is, actually wait, is Mars, do you have he more gravity on Mars or, oh no, it's less, it's less right? It's less, Because it's a smaller planet. You know who's gonna correct us? Who? The comments. Yeah. <laughs> You're an astronaut. Yeah. If you're Buzz Aldrin, let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> Speaking of let us know in the comments, who do you think won? Craig Federici thinks yes. I won. Oh, yeah, I mean, he has a place to sit on yours. Yeah, where's he? He doesn't even fit. His he hair doesn't, doesn't even fit. fit. Yeah, I didn't account for his glamorous hair. But yeah, let us know in the comments uh, which one you like better. Who won? Give some close ups. Um, thank you so much, Sean, for being yeah, on the show. Thanks for having me. It was fun. I haven't played with Legos in a long time. Me neither. So I'm out of practice. Yeah, this is super fun. I'm excited to have people do play Legos. Yeah, by, by, your, by the fifth Lego interview you do, I better see some masterpieces. Right? Oh, yeah. Give some practice. This, uh, I have to buy a lot more Legos now. Yeah, so. this is pretty restrictive. But it is. That was, that was the whole point. Yeah, that, that's where my AdSense money is going on, buying <laughs> there Legos. You go. Patreon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really, though, if you'd like to see more interviews where we build Legos and I interview people, then let me know in the comments down below. All right, um, I will leave everything in the description box down below, your channel, your Twitch channel. Um, this is super fun. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you next time. See Bye. Ya.